Mm. All right. We're live. This is July 17th. All right. So, Liz, are you going to do this? I'm going to do what? <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. So, for those of you that are new here, this is the Occupy Minneapolis Open Wednesday night meeting. We basically run down some quick announcements. We have stuff that's coming up in the next maybe a week or two. Uh, we got report backs about stuff that happened recently, usually local things. And then we do basically uh, temperature checks to um, with a short little kind of explanation of what the point of the topic is to decide how we allocate the time after this two, these two things are done. And then last week we did take a moment to agree that we wanted to watch a about a one hour documentary called Red. It's about a, a Turkish hacker collective called Red Hack. And uh, I used this really fun film and uh Bob, your things right there. So yeah. And so um Anyway, if that's all right with people, I would, I would think it would be good to kind of close the meeting out with the Red Hack movie, and so we could uh, maybe at about 7:50, 7:55, we could take a break for like five minutes, like stretch out, and then like shift over to the film. Um, it looks like uh, the uh, Chuck Klein audiovisual system is working there, so maybe we'll just kind of use that space to watch the movie. Um, so. With that being said, all right, let's uh, get to the first stuff, which I think is Chuck Klein stuff on the top of the list. Yeah, I was going to show some video. Um, going to have some music tonight, but I didn't know how it would turn out because we had an event over in St. Paul. So I kind of wrote the video and turned out everything. I don't know what's going to happen. Is it turned out that we could have done it? Well, anyway, so I'm going to just do that it's next week. You know who Tom Morello is? Um, the one video will be an interview with Bill Moyers, with Tom Morello. Uh, the second little piece of the video, about nine minutes long, will be uh, Tom Morello and um, Bruce Springsteen at Madison Square Garden. And they also, yes, will just be uh, CD music to fill the time. So that's next week. All right. So I'm sorry, uh, I'll, I'll write down the word. What, what time did you think you'd actually start showing the video again next week? I just want to write down. Uh, Roughly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of go with the flow, but mm -hmm. I'll get here about 6 and or about 4 and set things up and be ready to go by 4.30. If nobody's here, I'm going to hold things back in the morning. Okay. All right. I mean, I get such a kick out of him and Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, likewise, if we oh, feel... Oh, you chose me to turn it down. Turn, turn that music down. Too darn loud these kids these days. All right, so, um, and also, if we did have anything long form that we wanted to do in the six to nine period, let's, I don't know what that might be, but let's try to set aside time to talk about what we might do next week if we feel like we should do something like that. Let's try to keep that going. All right, was there anything else to add? Is that it, Chuck? Hmm? Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Okay, so uh, Bob Carney messaged me to talk about uh, an excessive force and some dimensions of the Terrence Franklin case. We're also going to talk about the thing on Monday in report backs, but Bob, if you want to lay out uh, the particular angle that you found. Yeah, um, and I, are we going to have a discussion during the report backs on uh, both of that? Yeah, I think people have a chance to say their piece on stuff too, but I think your detail why, kind of stands why don't Why don't I wait until then? Okay. Uh, Sounds good. All right. Um, okay, so next, um, July 22nd, uh, looks like we got a couple things going on in court that day. Um, in federal court, uh, the uh, Drug Recognition Evaluator uh, Program lawsuit, which uh, has several plaintiffs, some of them occupy people, uh, that is uh, moving forward. And so the, the full information on that is at 2 p.m., the ninth floor, the Minneapolis Federal Courthouse across the street from City Hall. The judge is Noel, like N-O-E-L, you know, Merry Christmas. And uh, so essentially to recap for people that haven't heard about this story, um, there was a, a training program called Drug Recognition Evaluators, which uh, for years has uh, picked people up around the Twin Cities, bringing in uh, police officers and sheriff deputies from around the state, and uh, basically enticing people to take drugs. And according to several program participants, they were given marijuana, heroin, et cetera, by the law enforcement officers and said, here, take this so we can look at your dilated pupils. 
And that is obviously totally unethical. Um, and so a number of people from Duties Night Against Police Brutality, Rogue Media, Twin Cities Indian Media, and Occupy Minneapolis Media like documented a lot of this going on, interviewed the participants. Um, they were forced to shut the program down, and it was the training program was shut down for a year. And then a few weeks ago, they announced that they were moving into California because it was totally unethical to be operated in the state of Minnesota. So that's the, the recap. And then, um, was that one important point on that? Yes. Is that they were also um, the, the kids that they were actually giving the drugs to? They were trying to get them to watch this group specifically occupy. Yeah. 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 So they asked who are the leaders and what is your plan and right. things like that after they got them intoxicated on drugs. Right. Yeah. And so the, the long form video is called MK Occupy Minnesota. It's about 40 minutes long. It's uh, free online. Uh, yes. Yeah, 2 p.m. on the ninth floor, Minneapolis Federal Courthouse, uh, July 22nd. So if you can have good presence there. Um, also, the U.S. Marshals will search all your stuff if you go there. So all right. Keep that in mind. Thank you. Um, all right. So I think next we have uh, CJ. There's some stuff going on to Occupy Homes tonight. Yeah, so I just came from a rally that's been started at uh, uh, an Occupy Homes uh, uh, host occupation. It's at 41st and 14th Avenue. I just, just keep watching here. Uh, when I left a few minutes ago, there were two people in custody uh, right then. I didn't stick with all the students uh, the details of what happened. But there is, again, there's a rally going on there. Uh, I, I, wish, I wish it was back in the day when we had these kind of uh, situations. We just all head down there and, and uh, support these as those days are gone. But anyway, uh, that's going on. You can check the Facebook page. I can't give details. I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to say, except because uh, this hospital system taking taken over. It's supposed to be known about it. Uh, police officers know about it now, apparently. We've got people in custody. So. Check the Facebook page. All right. And then uh, for further information, occupyhomesmn.org is the Occupy Homes website. And the banner of that website has the SMS uh, text message alert system to be used for housing eviction uh, defense stuff. You should use that, not social media, if you want to get involved. OK. Um, Bitcoin, uh, July 21st, there is a Twin Cities Bitcoin meetup in Columbia Heights. Um, this is the second one. I went to the first one. It was just me, my friend, and another guy because the weather was horrible. Um, and so Bitcoin is an open source alternative peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency, which has become fairly popular. It's worth roughly 90 US dollars per Bitcoin because it's held reserve for turning money. And uh, it doesn't seem to be power possible to counterfeit Bitcoin. So it kind of got a lot of interest. There's a lot of Occupy cats out in New York that were very into Bitcoin. So um, it's an interesting alternative idea. It's, it's, uh, called, and there's also a Bitcoin MN uh, Facebook page uh, that's been set up. And this was organized through meetup.com. I think it's called Bitcoin Everywhere. And it's in Columbia Heights. Yes? Wasn't the servers that Bitcoin was running on taken over by Homeland Security because of some international banking thing? Sure. Uh, great question. Uh, yeah, so there's different vendors that like are willing to exchange US dollars or other things for Bitcoin. And uh, their accounts under a, a, a payment provider like PayPal called Dewalla was frozen, and that was one of the Bitcoin exchange providers. It wasn't like the whole system. Yeah, but didn't they it was just one commercial vendor got the ban hammer. But other ones have hired tons of lawyers. Basically, the venture capital people are throwing money at lawyers to roll the U.S. government from crushing it. Like that's kind of the play of what's going on. Is, it, is, is it online? It, it's on, it's at Columbia Heights on uh, the, the, the 21st, and uh, the exact location, um, I think, is off uh, Central Avenue. Um, so anyway, uh, that's there. Uh, what time? Um, I think it's in the afternoon. I can grab it off. I'll grab it off my computer and put it on the board. Thank you. All right, and then um, there's also a Twin Cities Organizer 101 thing on July 27th, I think. Our friend Nathan Ness is hosting that. It, it sort of spurred from doing stuff like anti-sulfide mining, but he wants to kind of provide generic tips that you can use for uh, other types of things. So that, that's on July 27th. I think it's pretty early in the day. Um, and uh, I'll grab the exact time and location and put them up here. Um, and then on July 27th, there is a Bradley Manning rally. Our good friend Melissa Hill is uh, running that rally. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll throw the time up on there. I know it's around uh, the downtown area. Um, also, um, a little farther down the line, on August 3rd, there's a rally down outside the Hennepin County Jail against Sheriff Rich Stanick. And uh, that is about um, sort of saying that in the immigration processes, we shouldn't be using our county jail structure to enforce immigration law. Um, and that, I think, is a project of uh, MIRAC, Minnesota Immigrants' Rights Action Coalition. And that's on August 3rd. All right, and then Jamie Kelly. 
I think you have an item there on the 22nd. Oh, I just been summoned to eviction court again on Monday, July 22nd, and um, we're meeting at 10 after 8. It's actually at 845. Okay. I would appreciate any support I can get. Sure, absolutely. And that would be at the head of the county government right? Go for it. Right. Do you think Go you guys will meet on the people's plaza side yeah, first? Yeah, by, by the inside fountain. Okay, the inside fountain. Is the um, other side. The inside the government's fountain, yeah. not outside. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. 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 Thank
how do you feel about us just discussing the larger issue first before reading Dave's response? I, I think that uh, leading in with a, a paragraph from Dave and then moving to the discussion would be appropriate. Let's go to uh, discussion topics later. Shall, shall we move on to report backs for the moment? Mm -hmm. And then we will probably return to this, I would think. And then as well as evaluate all the other possible discussion topics. OK, so uh, yes. I think we should put that on the top of the discussion. Uh, yes, but it, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, well, and it'll all get, you know, get evaluated, sure. Um, so I'm going to hand this around, uh, just to try not to you know, get some salsa on it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's the, the filing of the order, including the rationale, and the ruling, and the waiver of fees. So right there, go around, and this will certainly be available to everybody. It is digitized already. So um, moving on to report back, uh, updates on Turkish resistance. Yes. Um, since last week, um, another kid died. He was 19 years old, and his name is um, Ali Ismail Korkmaz. And college kids got arrested because of protesting. And they used a different sort of chemical in Ankara. Um, they put it in the tanks and things like that. He died because of the tank chemicals? That no, was he died on? because of the brutality of um, the AKP youth and police brutality. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, would you, can you be any more specific about what happened? I know it was some brutality thing, but what happened? What I heard is that um, he got beaten up okay. on the street, and that's how he died. Yeah. There is nothing much Sorry. really since last week. But, um, I, was, I haven't been here for a while. Is it true that the park is not occupied anymore? What do you mean? I just saw that, uh, like, Jesse Park, Jesse yeah. Park, is it true that there aren't people there anymore? Well, um, the Istanbul mayor opened the park to public again. Okay. But, I mean, it's not about, the protests are not about the park anymore. It's, it, it has a larger reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's been, like, not necessarily daily protests in the way they were a couple of weeks ago, but there's still kind of protests happening yeah. all over the country, yeah. basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In many cities, hmm. police attacks um, keep continuing. I, I read last night that Israel wants an attack on Turkish, on Turkish, or on Syria, on Turkish airspace, and that if that gets confirmed, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the Ankara government by everybody in the country. Yeah. Is that true? I don't know if it's really true. I think that that's, I'm sorry, I, I think oh. that's been confirmed by some sources, including either the Daily Mail or Daily Telegraph and Israeli sources, but yeah, they've been discreet about the fact that they're intervening against Syrian arms caches. Like, so the regional war keeps starting to kick off. So yeah. it's all the better reason that these peace movement things, uh, you can enter Cobra, um, enter. Um, anyway, sorry, uh, yeah, so we're definitely looking at possible World War III stuff, but I think it's great that Turkish people are <laughs> fighting against their neoliberal government, which may stay off the war. I think it's effectively anti-war, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool, okay. Anything else to add? Okay, awesome. All right, so uh, obviously the, um, the verdict in the Zimmerman trial um, came out late on Saturday. Uh, I went down to the kind of last second midnight rally downtown and talked to a bunch of people and it was pretty interesting to some live streaming and then on Monday there was a pretty large, a, a number of different people including like Idle No More, Neighbors Are Ends of Change, uh, Occupy Homes, other people you know kind of called for, uh, as well as the people involved with the Terrence Franklin case, uh, called for a rally downtown on Monday uh, and there were a lot of people there. so. Um, Maybe first we should start with Bob's uh, part about the Terrence Franklin yeah. case, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, as I understand it, the rally was in, uh, during both Zimmerman and Terrence Franklin. And I have to say that, that I have issues with the, uh, let, let me put it this way. As a narrow legal question, I have to say that I think that the verdict of not guilty was correct. And so I had a problem going to the rally because of that. So I just want everybody to know that. But I see the other case as very different. Uh, I researched this, and there's a Star Trib article uh, about a, three weeks ago 
Uh, it turns out that there's a report that uh, Lucas Peterson was the officer that shot Terrence Franklin, and he has uh, the, the Star Trib headlines have 13 complaints against uh, officer. Well, those complaints are each the first document in a lawsuit. So the headline really should have said 13 lawsuits. And there's been a total of 700,000 paid out. Uh, he had killed one person uh, by uh, having a restraining uh, hold on him. And the person had already been handcuffed. <coughs> Uh, so that uh, that's going back several years. That's the, the uh, most serious case, just in terms of the amount that the city settled for. But one issue that really struck me was another case uh, where the plaintiff was Peterson, and what happened was the uh, this officer uh, Lucas Peterson and his partner uh, pulled over a vehicle. And the report, uh, the police report said that it had been going over 60 miles an hour in North Minneapolis on a city street. And so they subsequently pulled up to next to them, according to this report, pulled up next to them at a stoplight and ended up pulling over this person. Uh, and they uh, took some stuff out. And during the, and according to Peterson's uh, police report, uh, during that time, some, the, uh, the lady in the car, it was a man and a woman, uh, the lady jumped Peterson's partner on his back. And it turned out about a year later, the this thing finally wound its way through the justice system, and a judge looked at a video that Hennepin County had. And the video showed very clearly that nothing like that happened at all. The judge ended up dismissing the case because of lack of probable cause. Here's what that means. The police officer said that they had probable cause to pull this vehicle over because it was going over 60 miles an hour on a residential, you know, on a city street. For a judge to say that police officers don't have probable cause to pull over someone like that, given this video that the police officer had lied in his police report, what the judge is saying is, we can't trust, trust these police officers to the point where if they say somebody's going over 60 miles an hour, I don't believe them, and there's not probable cause to pull them over. Now, that is really an extraordinary statement. And one of the relationships that I see with the, the uh, Zimmerman and, and uh, Trayvon Martin case is that, you know, again, the legal system has to operate on evidence. And there have been a number of complaints against this officer Peterson, but the fact is, there is one court case where there was in, what I can see as incontrovertible evidence, videotape, that he false, made a false statement in his police report to the point where the judge refused to believe this probable cause. Now, the issue that I see is, is twofold. First of all, I think that there should simply, and they paid, the Minneapolis paid $65,000 to settle that case. And one of the reasons was that for over a year, this, or about a year, this person uh, that had been uh, accused of jumping on the subject. It's got a cloud over her record. She's uh, been arrested, uh, got a case in, you know, uh, assaulting a police officer. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there was a settlement for $65,000. The, so there's, there's two concerns that I have. First of all, I think there clearly should be a city policy that if, it, uh, well, actually there's three things. For, the first, first thing I wonder about is I don't understand why the judge didn't refer this for prosecution to begin with, but he did not. Uh, so, you know, I think there's a real question of whether there should be just a city policy if something like that happens. In particular, if something like that happens and a settlement is reached, that has to be referred for prosecution. Uh, falsifying a police report, you know, I, I, don't, I can't cite the state statute, but I can't imagine that it's legal for a police officer to lie on a police report. So that's point one. Uh, yes. Point two is, I think the city mm -hmm. should have a policy of terminating mm -hmm. an officer whenever there is evidence that a falsified police report and a settlement is reached. And the third point is that the only evidence that there is some for some there the forensic evidence, my understanding, does not really say very much in the Terrence Martin case, uh, Terrence Franklin case. The the only witnesses are the three police officers. And of course, the problem is you have one of them who simply 
based on one judge's ruling cannot be believed. So that's, uh, that's why this case is relevant, that that earlier case is relevant to the Terrence Franklin case. So I wanted to make everybody aware of this background. This has been reported in the Star Trib. This is a complaint. There's a, you know, there's a court record on this. It's, it's pretty hard evidence as far as that's concerned. Uh, so I wanted to just get this laid out as uh, information for the discussion. Yeah, thank you so much, Bob. And uh, I'll just add that Bob did send me over one of the 2008 legal documents from that officer indicating incredibly shady behavior. I'll also quickly mention that our friends at Communities United Against Police Brutality have a, uh, a petition kind of going to get a question on the city ballots to add to the city charter requiring police officers to have individual liability insurance so that these repeat offender officers would have a stratospherically high cost to be insured because they are clearly burning through huge sums of public money through constant abusive yeah. behavior. So that's one way that we can work on the continuing problem of state violence. Yes. On that very note, um, COAPB definitely needs some help gathering signatures. So if it has to be, and here's the, it has to be, you have to witness the signatures being made. You have to be willing to legally testify that you actually seen them. And the people that are involved have to be legally living in Minneapolis and have at least the ability to vote in Minneapolis to be able to be eligible. Hennepin doesn't count, by the way. Hennepin, there's no, no Minneapolis. This yeah, is a Minneapolis-specific yeah. city yeah. statute. City of, okay. And this is making history, by the way. This has never been done anywhere else. Right. All right, Doug, next. Yeah. Raise those hands high if you want yeah. to get in. Who is coordinating that effort? Because I'd be happy to help out at some public events and whatever. Cool. But I don't know. Uh, the Committee yes. for Professional Policing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I meant more. I, I mean, See I think okay. Okay. Yeah. Officially, I'll drop them on. Yeah, the committee is kind of the name yeah. of the spinoff project. Um, yes, Eric. A point of information: Michelle is in the building mm -hmm. now. Yes, she is. So, if you have a question, she'd be a good person to ask. Or they willingness to volunteer. I mean, every Saturday. <laughs> uh, Gillette. Just to kind of bolster, um, you know, the, the, this particular case uh, you're talking about, my daughter tried to report a, a, my encouragement a incident of domestic abuse to an officer at the third precinct who refused to fill out a report. And I asked her who the name was. It was Matt Segulia. He has uh, the fourth largest number of complaints of, of any police officer uh, on the Minneapolis police force. And he lost his right to carry a gun. He lost his job here. And the union got him his job back, even though he couldn't carry a gun anymore. And the reason that, that he lost that ability to carry a gun was because he was severely beating uh, a woman that he had a restraining order against on her own property, was caught by the uh, police in St. Paul. They saw him throw her down the driveway. She landed on her head. They tried to subdue and arrest him, and he reached for a fanny pack that he had uh, when they were trying to place him under arrest, and it had a load of gun in it. So we need yeah. these insurance policies. Mm -hmm. This is a huge deal. We've got to wow. these All right, uh, Doug? Yeah, and actually, it, that reminds me, I've had a couple of discussions on my Facebook wall recently. Um, you know, as somebody who's a union person, I think it would be good for us to take a look at, at those practices. I know people have done it in the past, but you know, when people do really, really crazy shit at my work, we do our best to defend them, but we don't have a chance. You know, if somebody gets caught stealing, somebody gets caught, you know, fist fighting a coworker, you're not gonna be able to get them back on the job. Cops, they kill people, they run over children accidentally, you know, all this fucked up shit Break that, strikes. that we yeah that we know happens on a consistent basis. And the union always comes in and is like, well, you know, you got to give him a second chance. You know, he ate too many donuts that day and was a little fast. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever the excuse is, um, you know, it's kind of embarrassing as a union person to explain to people that. Well, the reason these people get to keep their jobs oftentimes is because the union comes in and pulls a bunch of stunts and gets them to keep their job. And, yeah. yeah. 
All right. Well, did anybody want to add anything about uh, the, the Monday rally or maybe kind of building those, you know, horizontal connections around the community about this? Yeah, uh, yes. I know a bunch of us were there. So, Psycho, Larry, Doug, all of us were there. I thought it was beautiful. Paula was there. It was great. Lots of people, really good speakers, um, a nicely controlled march all around downtown. Um, I just, my, like, one lasting thought after it was I really hope we can somehow do this in North Minneapolis and mm -hmm. other yeah. neighborhoods where it's not just a bunch of business owners and people eating on Canopin Avenue. Like, oh, okay, yeah. okay uh, let's do uh, Nick, Nick, and then uh, Mike. Just um, from being at the rally or the mm -hmm. march and everything, I think it brings you a really good opportunity for us to do outreach, reaching out to these communities that have come together over this and trying to get some further actions done. And maybe, I don't mean any offense to anyone here, but like make this room maybe a little less white. We did pass out a lot of CUAPB Know Your Rights cards and heard a lot of stories from people who were like, oh, I wish I would have known that last week, or oh, I wish I would, you know, you know, whatever. So a lot of CUAPB cards were handed out. And that was, I think, probably the most. Uh, and in regards to that, um, we are planning something in North Minneapolis soon. So. And we're still doing cop watch, bar clothes, downtown, great fun. Super yeah. fun. Um, and then also too, I should add that the Terrence Franklin people are totally looking for people to help kind of keep carrying this torch. And they do, I think every other week have been the Terrence marches. So there was one like last Friday, uh, just before this ruling dropped the next day. Um, and then uh, those people meet at, uh, I think, Zion Church every Thursday. So the marches are every other Friday, and they meet on uh, Thursdays. I think that's the Zion Church on the north side. So um, that, I, what's that? I think it's on 23rd, though, I remember. Great, thank you. Um, and so I think that that would be a really good way that we could start building this connection and uh, kind of backing people up. So um, is that it for uh, the hoodies up situation? Yep. yep. All right. One cool. last little thing. Excellent. One, one last little thing. Sorry, place. what? There was one actually. One last one thing. Yes. Um, did you guys catch the little side route that ended up um, being going on? The, oh, yes. Oh, there yeah. was a nine year old boy. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, I was it actually was in the fun. middle of that and defending that. Yes, guy there right were two state. people on the outside of the protest, on the other side by the parking garage, um, on the jail side, kind of. And they, were, they had a megaphone and they were very, very visibly upset. And they were talking about how there was a nine year old boy who was hung on a clothesline in North Minneapolis. And that really happened. There are things on the news about it. He was found outside on a clothesline. It wasn't a clothesline cross, but he was somehow hung on the little T-shaped thing that used to be a clothesline in an abandoned house at 3200 in Bryant. Mm -hmm. And a neighbor saw him and took him down, and she was a nurse, and he had a very weak pulse, and they brought him to Children's Hospital, and he lived for four days, and then he died. Yeah. And wow. So these people were very upset that this. there was so much focus on Trayvon and Terrence, as far as, you know, I'm very right. Actually, I actually yeah. talked to those guys um, for quite a while. Yeah. That was part of what they talked about, but they also talked about, they said, they, and they were actually, I agree with the, what they were saying, that a lot of the, of the, the protest rally was just theater. Uh -huh. and they said, we got much deeper issues going on in North Minneapolis, like the prison and the complex. Right. Says, mm -hmm. they, are, they are preparing black people for prison. Mm -hmm. And we have a bunch of what, what we would call the sinister ministers. Yeah. Preach into the choir without talking about these much deeper issues. And that's mm -hmm. part of what they were talking about. Yeah. Right. I thought they were great. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a more radical element. Yes, they yes. need a more radical element. Way more sure. sure. Yeah. And maybe that, oh, Eric, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I caught the last name of the person. I think I could remember the first name. Michael. Michael. Michael Sullivan. Michael Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Okay, uh, let's go uh, Beth and then Doug. Beth. 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 Okay. They've been called Beth. As somebody who just got out of jail recently, I have a question because I'm wondering, because I've never been to jail, I've never been to arrested before now. I noticed when I was there because I was awake all night, I think that they sometimes use temperature differences in their home. And I even asked the police, do you do this to get people to change or whatever? Because I noticed I'm going through a very third time paradigm shift. And for the first time in my life, I've learned to stop listening to the wrong people. I don't know if that speaks to anybody. Um, poisonous pedagogy in that family. 
I'm always going to cry. Or I'm not going with you anymore looking like that. Because I'm standing up to the police. I'm standing up to the people who lied about me. Saying that I poisoned them. I poisoned their dog. Because their brother, whatever. And it's funny how they say no contact or whatever, but this person's calling me mm -hmm. after they see me sitting in the Jewish community parking lot, sitting there doing slow yoga because everything hurts me, spilling weeds, and I'm crying because these might be my last days of freedom, and I didn't do anything wrong. And Thank I think both. that happens to a lot of people, and the police have been following me constantly, that I was feeling like, is this the NSA following me, the CIA? I caught on right away because they're dressed like construction workers. They're dressed like mailmen. They're dressed like people in the community. And they don't think I know what's going on. I was put on a conditional release because why? Well, my cousins are having to call me a term. That's where it's going to be. My other cousins are going to be a term. But I think if anybody wants to help Beth uh, document this stuff, maybe we can talk but about that off the side. Like, because yeah. there's certainly more than enough yeah. tape. Yeah. All right. Well, so, all right. Um, Eric, yes. Just one more thing on Trayvon. I know it's gotten so much press and so much time for everyone. But um, on today's Democracy Now!, Michelle Alexander was on. Uh, she worked in the Jim Crow. Um, and she talked about why uh, George Zimmerman's mindset is the real issue with the Trayvon Martin case. Uh, George Zimmerman was acting in a way that's impressive, and for a lot of people, that's why significant portions of the population don't feel safe and don't feel like they're given a fair shape in this world. So if you have a chance, I recommend Michelle Alexander. Right on. Okay. Um, okay, Doug, let's try to be yeah. quick. A lot of yeah. people have talked multiple no, times. I just, I just wanted to, to put in a quick last point that we should also keep in mind with these bigger rallies what we can potentially do with them. I stopped the train twice. <laughs> I had help, but we've never done that before. And even talked with Todd about it at the end. He was like, well, you give me a couple thousand people, we can get some shit done. And I'm like, you know. Right That's on. a new one. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. First it was chalking, now there's trains. Oh. Chalk right. trains. You know, and, and it makes me think that maybe doing a, a video about the war on drugs and the prison industrial complex would be really appropriate. So maybe we'll try to talk about that next week and do one the week after. How about that? Um, okay. All right. Uh, culprit, yes? Uh, I was just going to say um, I had a friend out in L.A. that had uh, witnessed some of the rioting over the Trayvon Martin thing. I, if, if anyone wants to talk about that at some point, you can talk to me, but um, I think we should move on. All right. Let's go on local Sounds good. Um, okay. Well, let's move on. Um, all right. So we're at uh, 710, and we're really trying to get to have a break at 755. So we got to get through this and then decide these. Okay. So um, we have a California uh, prisoner strike, speaking of California. So we can do a real quick summary on that. Yes? So, yeah, uh, again, I'm going to plug Democracy Now! today. Uh, they did a good job of covering the latest on the California prisoner strike. It's a hunger strike. Mm -hmm. It's regarding the conditions that are uh, being endured by the prisoners in California, in the state system. Uh, it is notorious. Um, the demands, I, I sent out the link. Um, there's like five demands. but. Uh, one of the demands is to end long-term solitary confinement in these, uh, what they call them shoes, uh, where people don't see daylight for uh, months at a time. Um, so really atrocious conditions in the California prisons. Um, Two-thirds of the state's 33 state prisons are now participating in the hunger strike. So this is a mass, it's the largest, I believe it's the largest hunger strike in the history of the California state system. And this is the third time that they've had to do it. Um, so uh, if you want, I guess this goes into announcements, but if you want to get more involved with that or learn more about it, there's an Education for Action event tomorrow evening. 
I mean, if you want to go to the Terrence Franklin organizing, you should do that. But uh, if you want to stay on the south side, I think it's over at the Mini Haha Free Space at uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. And that's again for the California Prisoner Strike. Uh, I'm done, so I don't know what you want to do. In the California prison, there's, there's the gangs, right? Are, are all the gangs participating in the strike? Do you know how much participation is in the, in the prisons that have the strike? I think it's pretty across a lot of grounds of people. Yeah. They all share these common concerns. Two thirds of the prisons are involved, right? In California? In California. Okay, cool. And then, so yeah, I got that down there at 7 p.m., me, ha ha, free space. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay, so earlier today, a whole bunch of us were down at the lovely place known as the uh, Public Utility Commission. <laughs> it, was, it was briefly relabeled that way. Um, downtown St. Paul. Uh, and the uh, horrible Enbridge Line 67 proposal was on the agenda. So, would somebody who was there care to talk about this? Real quickly, yes? Really quickly, um, today was the vote for the first phase for the Ember 60 Line 67 expansion. And um, we had some fabulous indigenous leaders come down to speak. Captain Hollander was planning on speaking. And who else was who's the gentleman with you? A retired mechanical engineer, Stan Okay. And um, they got shut down by the um, by the commissioners, uh, when Nona LeDuc was there, and Marty Cobas with um, uh, Honor the Earth and Indigenous Environmental Network. Um, anyway, we all stood in solidarity with, with them when they were not allowed to speak. All the Enbridge folks were allowed to speak. And the commissioners voted unanimously for the expansion to go through. So the first phase has been approved. And we have public comment period on the second phase until next Wednesday, so we need to start writing again to them. Although I feel like we need to be doing more than just writing to them, but we can talk about that. Um, and what else was I going to say? <coughs> I got escorted beautifully out of the building. All right, so I think we had uh, That's e right. in this <laughs> so I was very angry. Yeah, Liz, how did? How did they shut them down? They said they didn't know who said that they would be able to speak, but uh, they weren't going to be allowed to speak. Although, Marty did get a few words in at the end. Um, I think it's really ridiculous that when we have indigenous leaders who are talking about treaty rights and land, and these oil companies are going through there without permission in the first place, that they were so rude to not um, give them the floor for at least three minutes or even a minute, you know? So. Yeah, that was basically going to be my question, too. It was like, how do they have any legal standing to do that? Because some of those folks are well-known leaders that probably did submit proper documentation. I don't personally know, but I, I'm assuming they, like, requested through the proper channels to speak. And well, no, not have, do, yes. do we have legal recourse um, or some other means that we can go that route or at least do we need to surround them and do some Occupy type of stuff? <laughs> um, well, we're going to talk strategy in the next week here when I'm quite busy getting her wild rice sold um, for the season, but we'll be talking in the next week or so. And Marty and I have already started speaking, so we'll, um, we'll see what comes of it. I want them to take the lead on it. Um, um, for those of us that were there, there was a real interesting um, window into just the absurdity of having a place for the public to come in, having an agenda. The issue that went by the boards before the Enbridge, there was a number of issues and they were, they had this conversation that was all uh, coded by item uh, 1A and item 1C. <laughs> and so we had all the, this, they have this audience, and they speak in terms, so the audience has no concept of what it is they're saying. And then, and then they have this issue come up for the uh, pipeline, 
and they don't even have the coded conversation. They just say, okay, everybody shut up, we want to vote. Shut up, shut up, we want to vote. Yeah. That's all they did. Mm -hmm. They did not even make one statement. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, uh, uh, Gillette and then uh, Bob. Yeah, one of, one of the interesting things is that it's really, all the Public Utilities Commission is, it's really not public, and I, you know, they just put that word in there. <clears throat> to make it sound good, but it's really just a venue which, in which our government can interface with common carriers and uh, to conduct business. It's, yep. a, it's a legal and business court, actually, and it's just a... That's why they do the item numbers, and um, all the laws are made by the oil company. And uh, in this case, so that the, are under their jurisdiction, they set the whole system up. So it's, it's, gonna be, it's really not our government. It's really a bunch of greasy palms. Okay, we had uh, I think uh, Cobra, and then uh, or, or, I feel like someone was ahead of me. Okay, yeah, I think I, I'm sorry, I missed Bob. Yes, Bob, you're up. Um, I have done a couple of cases on the Public Utilities uh, Commission. One of them I worked with an attorney named Meyer Sharp. Um, he uh, uh, was a working in public interest law after he retired. He challenged uh, a policy where it sells collecting taxes uh, for NSP rate payers and then they were paying them to the uh, shareholders because they had losses from NRG. But without the details of that, the point is that Meyer Sharp filed an appeal after the Public Utilities Commission ruling. And so you need to check on whether you can do that. My understanding is that the standing issue, they have the right to be able to file an appeal, is a very low bar. Uh, so he did get that into an appellate court. Unfortunately, he was about 90 years old. He passed on during uh, before the, the appellate court ruled. But what you might want to check on is uh, whether you can get that into an appellate court as an appeal and also raising these issues of why this testimony and uh, speaking is not allowed. Okay. Um, I, I, well, this went off, but, uh, all right, uh, sorry, uh, Cobra and then Kathy, I think. And okay. then, and then, I'm sorry, Cobra, Mike, and then Kathy. So I just wanted to point out uh, during this, uh, or, or before, before the whole commission, like, came out and everything, you walked in, or you were walking into the room and they had, like, two stacks of, like, you know, pamphlets so you could look through or whatever, like packets of paper. And the biggest one was the uh, the one for the Enbridge pipeline. And the other one was like this other small thing. And like, was it Tom? Yeah, Tom, uh, Tom was saying that they went through all of this, like point, point one A, B, C, and like all that. But this huge packet filled with so many points, they didn't say one damn thing about it. So I thought that was funny. The biggest packet they didn't even look at. You know, um, I know that myself and Loki and Liz and Marty and some others here in the room have actually been at a number, and Gillette here, has been at a number of these public utility commission hearings. And well, first of all, we need to call them what they really are. They're not public utility commission hearings. They're corporate utility commission hearings. And that's all they are. All they are. We are not involved in the process at all. Huh? Circle jerk. Circle jerk, yeah. Well, and, and that's why I keep on asking this question of why are we even treating these people like they're in any way legitimate? Because they're not. They are not representing us, the people. They, we're paying for their salaries, but so they're working for the corporations. And so I've been asking the question repeatedly, over and over again. I keep on being reinforced every time I go to one of these circle jerk offs at these utility commission hearings. And I think we need to start asking ourselves much bigger, broader, deeper questions on how to move forward. So. Cool. All right, uh, was anybody else, I'm sorry, Kathy, yes. I just wanted to say, um, I know that Stan and I had also applied ahead of time for permission to speak, and I had called several times before, and I asked, are we going to be allowed to speak, or are we going to be allowed to speak, and I kept being told, we haven't decided that yet, it's up to the chair of the commission. So we didn't know until today, and then when we sat down with the chair, was, this idea was a great idea to go aggressively sit in the speaker's chair kind of thing. Um, that's when she, the head of the chair, the head of the commission kind of, spoke to us saying, why are you sitting here? You're not going to be allowed to speak. That was the first we heard that we were going to be allowed to speak. Um, yeah. Anyway, but um, there is a Minnesota statute that said that they're only entitled to have to have one hearing on these.
these issues, and they've already had two. So, I mean, another possible legislative change, I know we don't want to do that, is to change the, the law from one to three or something. It does say the law, the one to one three. And as to whether or not we can um, file a, forget the word, what do you use? An appeal. Um, there is one lawyer who's been coming to the MN350 meetings who is looking at that. Ideally, you know, it would be fun to have like a, a landlord or somebody who's really affected by the pipeline to file on behalf. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, Gillette, and then Loki, let's try to get you this quick one. Well, you know, one of the things that really okay. struck me at, this, at the meeting was uh, today there was that, you know, they, it actually did really come out that the Office of Pipeline Safety is paid by Enbridge. Yeah. And and so uh, that that's a that was so pipe, the office of pipeline safety is supposed to be a governmental entity, mm -hmm. and they are not. And they admitted that to us there. Yeah. Dan, Dan and his dog. And <laughs> it was it was an interesting exchange. This guy and a bunch of us. The the guy from the state, like he had a binder that literally said trade secrets that we couldn't look at, you know. And we and we kept grilling about what the hell chemicals are actually in this stuff, and he couldn't give any answers or explain where the deal was. So it was yeah, Doug's. For clarity, are are they being paid like they're being forced to pay because they've had so many issues and and. Somebody made them pay, or are they volunteering to pay to fake commission? Do we know that the Office part of yet? Pipeline safety is paid by. They, they're paid to oversee and you know police the people that pay them. Well, right, but but what I'm the, the clarity I'm asking for is: is this a situation, say, like some of the tobacco settlements, where you know they're paying money for certain programs? you know, in in lieu of, of fines or because of fines or, or is this just like a straight up we're paying you and fuck anybody who says otherwise situation. I think it's comparable to the way that the Food and Drug Administration gets large sums of money directly from the drug companies when they're evaluating those drugs. I think it's the same yeah. kind of idea. Oh, okay. Bob, you Which is sort of really of more, yeah, just more generally, far. it's typical for regulatory agencies these days to be paid for on the uh, uh, Security Exchange Commission and so forth. They're all paid for by the people who regulate. Meyer Sharks, like I mentioned, used to say, the regulators regulate, the regulated regulate the regulators. Yeah. That's how it works. Well put. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, Eric, real quick, and then I think we should close stack on this. Well, a clarification question. You had the interview with that guy at the end, and you were recording. Yes. Uh, is that available for public discussion? Yeah, uh, the the con internet connections were super sketchy in there, and one of them got queued into my phone. If I can manage to pull it all out, it will go on my YouTube channel and be available at Creative Commons so that everyone may remix it. And we got into the nitty gritty. So, yeah, that's the plan there. Okay, yeah. and I have a follow up. This is a FYI. Um, I got an email from um, a lesser known environmental group. I'm sorry, I can't remember right offhand which one it was, but uh, they notified me of a bill that's going through Congress. This is the U.S. House of Representatives um, that would basically uh, fast track the ability of corporations to extract uh, strategic minerals. And that, I believe that would include oil, um, so that they don't have to go through a process at all. And since this would be a federal law, I assume that would include the state of Minnesota. So uh, basically, uh, check out, it's, it's, it's a law, something like strategic mineral rights extraction, something like that. Uh, HR 761, maybe? or 671. Um, it's in the house now, and um, one of the websites I went to said it only has like a 20% chance of passing, but that would really suck if it passed. It would suck for northern Minnesota, too, the whole sulfide mining thing, uh, which I think they, the corporations could use to bypass uh, public input. Cool. All right. Um, well put, and that also reminds me a little bit the Trans-Pacific Partnership Secret Treaty, which is a very similar, horrible thing that we talked about uh, earlier. Okay, so I think we'll close the stack out there and move to discussion topics. Now, so we have one, two, um, the movie, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items total. 
And so what would be great is the people that wrote those up can summarize within only 15 or 20 seconds what the point is of their discussion and purpose rather than simple reflection. Um, that would be great. Um, so let's start with uh, who wrote Work With 350 Org? Um, okay. Easy. Uh, yes. Uh, so I didn't write it. Michael, Michael did. Mike did. Okay. He just wanted to talk about Occupy working with 350 dollars. Okay. All right. Let's see you there. Okay. FCC lower power radio. All right. This is something that we had agreed to talk about two, two weeks ago. Was actually approved, um, but uh, it, it, the meeting was not completed. Um, I just wanted a couple minutes to just throw the idea out there that we could maybe try to work with some other groups that got kind of low power radio licenses. The time is running out on this. Amy Goodman's been trying to sort of highlight this issue. So only a couple minutes just to see if we can put some feelers out with other groups to work with. So um, all right, so that, that's the description to that one. All right, so that's good. And then Mike's like said, Red Hack is the, yes, Mike, you want real, real fast about the 350, like, like, like 15, 20 seconds, dude. OK, um, this is just to begin the discussion, OK, because we can go with this later. I. I'm feeling almost like um, Occupy Homes as I do with, with, uh, with 350 org right now. We had an, an action that was going on. Liz was involved in that action. And it was actually, we had some of the 350 people come in and divert people away from the action. We were, we were trying to shut down the actual offices. We were trying to take over the offices. And the 350 people came home and said, no, 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 this is bad. And makes us look bad, blah, blah, blah. And our action actually ended up being curtailed and that actually ended up happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. So, so right, can't so, trust 350 is what I'm trying to say. Right. Okay. Got the gist of that. Okay. So, we have a set of five from CJ. So, 20 seconds times five maximum. I can drop all of mine. Uh, I've been bringing them up for the last five weeks. I think my answers have been discussed. I believe it's important to say that I've discussed my issues. But I'll have to pay them today for the issue of the balance of the meeting. I think we're going to talk about that today. Let's get on with it. Okay. All right. So, we'll go right down again. So, uh, court document surprise, again, we have a situation where uh, CJ got a restraining order put on Panda on June 18th, which means that the state of Minnesota, through the Minneapolis Police Department and Hennepin County, is now controlling, to some extent, who is allowed in our meetings. And also, I wanted to uh, lay out Dave Bicking, part of Dave Bicking's statement with regards to the situation. So, what we're going to do is go through each of these, and then I want, if everyone can kind of give temperature checks, just give a real high wave if that's what you want to talk about, and then we'll kind of go with basically the, like the top three, and like I said, the radio one can be done very quickly. So starting at the top, uh, work with 350.org, give us a high one if you want to talk about it. Okay. A couple people, okay, okay, all right, so uh, FCC low power radio, all right, some more, some more, okay. All right, so and then uh, Red Hack is already scheduled. Okay, so violence at Occupy meetings with uh, CJ's topic. All right, so five, seven, eight, okay. And then uh, the court document surprise. Woo! All right, so, all right, so that's probably the, the bigger one there, um, but I think also uh, FCC Low Power Radio clearly did have some support, and I think we can address that quickly. So I think what we're looking at is a uh, core document surprise probably ties into this point as well. So is that okay? We'll go to FCC Radio very briefly, and then sort of between those two, is that okay with everybody? Can we or, is that, yeah, roughly, or whatever, it'll be discussed. Yeah. All right, and so after, again, what's that? Can you vote after to see what we have time left to discuss? Yeah, if we manage to drill through everything. So again, we're going to try real hard to, you know, respect, like, you know, one voice, uh, staying on stack, all that kind of thing. Um, if people go on and on or try to eat the clock, you know, they're going to get cut off. People give, give a roll if it gets excessive, like, and we'll try to actually hew to that. All right. And again, we'll try to finish all of this in 20 or 25 minutes tops. So. FCC Low Power Radio. Does anybody know any organizations that would be interested in, you think, working on a radio station, like, and getting together the resources, like the, you know, probably several thousand dollars of gear, a space rental, that kind of thing, and getting a new small station, kind of like how KFAI started in Walker Church so many years ago. Raise your hands high if you got one to add, and we'll just sort of go around stacks this way, starting with Mike. Where's Dan? In the media. And the people who had the uh, the uh, old um, free free radio from cities. All right. Um, cool. Gillette. Maybe. How much does it cost to capitalize it? Uh, that that is a very good question. I think it could be done for less than ten thousand dollars plus rent. I think that's not a problem. 
Um, yes? Is there a topic of the reason this radio station would be created? I, I think the... Um, uh, that, radio station, basically. That's a great question. Let's, let's keep going. I'm sorry, E, let's go to E. Corporate media sucks. Yeah, and please back this up. I'm sure you've read about this. I, I, what you're asking is, I read something that they're opening up, they're opening up opportunities for licenses for smaller yeah. radio stations. Mm -hmm. So they've just done this, and it's like, or they're going to do it soon, and it's like, okay. Yeah, the deadline for the application process is within a, a basically less than three months. So if we're going to try to get an application together, we've got to get all the resources together on a short basis. So was that, did anybody else here have their hand up? And then we go to, I think, Doug, or sorry, you, and then... I know a guy who's a, a ham radio operator. He's a very independent-minded, and he knows he has all the skills, and he may even have all the equipment already to do it. Uh, cool. I, but he doesn't have the job, doesn't have the by Crystal in North Minneapolis. All right. Well, we need those those whiz people. So if you can reach out to them, maybe we can get it rolling a little more next week. I think that'd be great. Okay. I think let me add uh, you and then you and then you. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we can do just <clears throat> on laptops and using simple equipment. But I was also going to throw out that you know there's smaller community radio stations like KFAI that already have setups for doing studio time and if we want things more professionally <coughs> recorded we could probably work out deals with them rather than renting such a big space and investing in so much equipment ourselves. Right. So finding that digital recording gear to get segments going. Um, yes, did you have a point, point of process? Oh, yeah. okay. Point of information. Um, when we did have the free, free uh, uh, Twin Cities Free Radio, it was actually going to various places. Uh, the, gov the government, the cops didn't know where it was, and it was free. Nice. People will volunteer. It can be done. It can be done. Nice. It has been done. Cool. All right, we had uh, you back there. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you can get government grants for some of that stuff, like equipment and things like that, too. I'm sure you all probably knew, but I've did some research into it, and it's, it's not that hard, but I just didn't have the ambition to do it. All right, so maybe nonprofit fiscal sponsors and looking at groups that might be able to help um, sort of vouch for grants. All right, you can. Um, what kind of tied into the KFAI is probably a good resource to start with. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're definitely friendly to the idea, and I don't think they would see us as competitors. No. Um, I think talking to groups like AIM, um, I hesitate to say it, but maybe NOC, you know, to me, groups around the area that are actually doing similar work. Um, basically, every group that was there at this AIM Franklin March. Yeah. We should reach out a hand and be like, hey, let's get a community radio station where there's a radio station. And I think it will all be there. I just want to make the point of what a vote to like KMOJ. That's yeah. really yep. in the station. We're going right. to keep oh, on stack. Uh, um, so I have a friend that works at KVSC, uh, St. Cloud State University's college radio. So I can I can talk to them yeah. to see if they might be interested in throwing you in on a little bit. Tom? Just so you know, there's a limited number of spots in this uh, frequency band that's opened up. And the right wing is racing to fill the air just like they filled all the rest of the air. So serious action should come together and coalesce to obtain the license and work out the details later. Eric, assuming you're bottom lining this potential project? I'd, I'd be happy to try to rope people together. Okay, yeah. um, so I have three names I'm not going to divulge because we're live streaming, but I can get back to you on this. Alright, anybody else? Okay. Cool, well let's maybe try to reach out to those connections and then maybe try to revisit this next week and see if we're going to bring those new things to the table and then um, kind of you know, actually grab the application and see what we have to check off. Maybe reach out to you know folks like uh, NOC or CUAPB or other people to see if we can find some fiscal sponsors. Aim, I don't know more, all those kind of cats. So, all right, so, um, and, uh, e. I'd like to drink all the heart. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it just for you, Ian. <laughs> cool, all right, did anybody else have anything to add on radio? Let's just try to reach out and get some more stuff rolling next week. Yeah. Okay, all right, um, so I think with that, now we are moving to the harassment order that was posted. So um, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm just going to read like about five sentences from what Dave sent me this morning. And so again, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, Dave Bicking is the owner of this building. Um, His personal space. 
Yeah, this is, and he lives upstairs. So um, this, is, this is what Dave sent to me. Um, he said, for me, this is the last straw. He can't be putting my name and business address in the court records without even contacting me. A total betrayal of what trust I've been trying to maintain during this dispute. I won't be going to court or to the police, but as far as I'm concerned, he is not permitted in 4200 Cedar unless this is somehow explained or justified or resolved in the future. For now, I'm okay with this being present at tonight's Occupy meeting, at least long enough for this to be discussed, with what I imagine is an inevitable and just conclusion that he is forever banned from Occupy meetings. We have the right of free association, which includes the right of free disassociation. Also, for what it's worth, it is private property, a private building, even if I don't generally treat it that way or think about it that way. I hope there is a collective decision, but for better or worse, I do have a final say. Thank you for dealing well and honorably with this difficult issue. So, that was what they had to say. Um, so, I, I thank you for being clear. So, let's, let's just go around and stack, like, twice on this. That was Dave Bicking's direct quotes to, to, to me an email regarding his ownership of this building, referring to CJ, saying that CJ is not welcome in this building because of this legal situation that he's put Dave into without notifying Dave. So um, let's let's try to maybe I think we should go around and, and like yeah let's just go around and, and sort of like that people should weigh in on, on this and, and like we should really try to bring this to resolution tonight with the finality. We'll start with Mike. Okay, folks, I have been a defender of CGB here forever because of my belief in the ideas of free speech and free association. This has crossed a fucking line. Mm -hmm. Getting one of our allies and putting a fucking place yes, board against him across the fucking really line. Sure. I have defended you forever, CJ, just for the right to be here. Just cross the fucking no fuck you. You cross the fucking line. I say kick his ass out. Mike, Mike, let's let's refrain from so, using um, okay. vulgar words, please, okay. and kind of be civil okay. on I, this situation I hope, because I hope, I hope he's escalated. Okay. He already has been escalated. He's yeah. Tomahawk, you have any say? Okay, Gillette. Don't let it hit you on the way out. Oh. oh. <laughs> Eric. Um, I think it's important to say that there is a line, uh, which we haven't done a very good job of, of talking about. Um, I think for us to be active and effective organizers, we have to be real about the context that we're organizing in. And the context we're organizing in, and I think it's been said directly or indirectly through most of our meetings is that we have an enemy. We have uh, a challenge in our society to overcome what I would call the state corporate nexus. That is the combination of state and corporate power that ran the PUC meeting earlier today that a lot of us mm -hmm. were at. Eric, can that, you speak up a little bit for a That, that uh, you know, certainly uh, put us in the financial crisis that uh, has kicked so many people out of their homes. Uh, it's uh, been irresponsible to life on this planet. Um, and for us to uh, go to that nexus of power, to the state corporate system, and ask them to come into our space, or even tempt them to come into our space, is a line that nobody in this group should cross. It doesn't matter whether it's CJ or anybody else. That's right. And so, for example, if there's an agent or someone working as an agent in our group, you know, you're not fucking welcome. That's right. Okay? Okay. I'll leave there. Okay, Tom. I can't follow this vulgarity. Um, I agree with this, the same thing that if there's issues with somebody, bring them to the table. Do not run to the police and keep secret for over a month that there's these legal things that come into the world. Just a, don't laugh, but when you look through the world through piss-colored glasses, you will have a jaundiced view of other people. Eric? Yeah, um, well, 
I really feel like I feel like that I mean okay my feeling right now is I feel sad um, I was surprised to hear that restraining order thing on Panda. Um, I um, I just want to encourage just by putting this out that whatever we're saying right now, let's let's do it respectfully. Um, I really know that that's like yeah. So and then the other. And just thinking, I mean, for real, like, I've, I've, I've had, you know, we've, we've been with CJ and he's been in, in Occupy and there's been a lot of things that we've done together, basically. I don't want to sound Mr. Rogers. No, but like, I mean, we've done, you know, we've been, we've, we've marched together. I mean, there's a lot of things, like I remember the pirate action, I don't have to say anymore. Um, so, so I, I just think that I feel sad. I don't, I don't like to see anyone be let loose from Occupy, or anyone to be kicked out. Um, and, and, um, I think that this brings up and it like this just touches on an issue like as surprised as I am at what you, you've done, CJ, like um, I know that and uh, other people I won't even name names. That's just crazy. Um, there's been things that have happened and. Boundaries, you know. I think there's an important word, and I think it's boundaries. I think I think in this group sometimes we've maybe not intentionally, but crossed other people's boundaries. And mm -hmm. what can happen is people can then take things in their own hands, and that's what CJ did. So I really, really want us to address violence. I want us to address when when we're ready. Maybe this is a good time. Um, crossing, crossing whatever that is with someone else, and not and forgetting respect at times. So I think respect is what I would love. I'm going to pass. All right. Thanks, Ethan. Yeah, I want to thank you for those words. You know, you can say things like that when you're not much uh, support. We'll make you move. Uh, I hear tech too. So I, I, I'm a heretic now. I've been um, um, casting into those that, 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 that because I brought this uh, string work, which I did do. But if you won't recall, actually, the live stream will bear me out on this. I tried to bring up the issue of violent this group for seven meetings in a row. Seven meetings in a row, I've been talking about the issue of violence, and the group refuses to talk about it. As we refuse to talk about any one of my issues. I refuse to talk about this issue of police torture. I refuse to talk about the issue of drinking and alcohol. People are confused about the issue of occupying a house, about the homes, and we're going to do it right. People are confused about any of my issues. It's just a form of censorship. So I'm surprised, I'm surprised, I'm surprised that uh, you've got me today with the bonds you have. I mean, that's, that's you know, uh, I was, I thought maybe several weeks ago uh, that I could be uh, asked to leave. So it's not surprising me at all. Uh, I was with a group called uh, the, uh, the co ops, the co ops, the food co ops. We were anarchists too, uh, the beast, and uh, we uh, were going to have to call a police set for any reason. But one day we called the CO, mm -hmm. the Stalinist organization, uh, came in, firebombed our car stores, beat up people up to the heights, people beat up front of the street. So what did the anarchists do? They called the police. Okay? And Bush comes to shove, gets a couple of people to address the issue, and said to the police, so that's what we have to do sometimes. That's what we have to do. Okay. Okay, hold on. Go ahead. Uh, well, a couple of things. First of all, 
Uh, earlier, CJ said that he doesn't have an objection to hand of being here if this issue of violence is resolved. And so I think one thing we need to keep in mind is that you know, there are some precipitating events. Uh, CJ has said that his uh, vehicle has been vandalized. Uh, and there has been an issue of violence raised. And that's something that needs to be dealt with, I think. And uh, it sounds like it has not been dealt with. Now, I talked with Dave Bicking about uh, the situation with Panda a couple weeks ago on the phone. My understanding was that there was going to be an effort to resolve this thing privately. And evidently, that did not happen. Uh, I want to make another point regarding what exactly this restraining order is. Uh, and I'm not, I, first of all, I'm not entirely clear about it. Uh, I don't know that much about restraining orders, but in general. Yeah, where did you go? Yeah. Yeah. Where did right I'm right reading there. it. Okay. Well, you don't know what I'm uh, uh, but my general understanding is that a restraining order is simply an order to someone to stay away from certain locations, and it's brought uh, for cause. And you know, the cause in this case is uh, that uh, I know that Panda was at least charged with an assault that resulted in a concussion. Uh, so that's a fairly serious issue in and of itself. And then you've also got the question of you know the, the role of Dave Vicking in, in the Buildings. Now, Dave Bicky owns the building. I don't think there's any legal question at all that he can say uh, who can come into the building or not legally. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, but you also have the question of, you know, does the organization want to give the owner of the building, in effect, what amounts to a right for censorship? So that's another issue. It seems to me that in general, there has been this issue about uh, violence and threats. It hasn't been addressed for a while, and it does need to be addressed. And maybe if CJ can, and I guess I'd like to make one other point about the restraining order. Um, I don't know how it is triggered. I mean, if somebody shows up at a location, presumably CJ would have to call the police, and at that point the restraining order would be involved. But I would also assume that if CJ doesn't call the police, it wouldn't be a vote. And I'm also, uh, I think that if CJ wants to withdraw the restraining order, that could probably be done too. So the point that, that I want to reach is that maybe we can still resolve this by agreeing to discuss this issue of violence and by agreeing to withdraw the restraining order. I, I'd like to suggest that as a possible solution. Okay. Um, I'm just like a clarifying question. It, are any of the allegations in here about any of this <coughs> violence that supposedly Panda has done actually substantiated? And if so, why is there not a court case being filed and why is he not already in jail? It will happen at a court date. It's a pending court date. Okay, I was so like there to, is substantiated evidence. Well, no, that, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You guys, I would like to add that we do have like ten minutes, and we have several other people. So I don't, I'm not trying to like bide on your time and you know things that you have to be said, but we do need to respect the schedule of what's going on. Um, so. If anybody else has anything to say, please talk after. Well, um, let's try to keep the 30 yeah. seconds to a minute and yeah. let everybody come around yeah. to the, like, yeah. let's do that. And let's, so just try to make it quick. So, so Jamie's well, up next. Can we decide as a group whether we continue this or start the meeting later? I, I think that since we have half the table done, we need to get at least let everybody have a chance yeah. to stay in this phase. I, I think it's really important. Yeah. Because <laughs> this was done in secret, and we got to lay it on the table. So yeah. like Jamie, please. Time. Like as a group say, we add an extra 10 minutes. You mean like temperature check? I'm yeah. More okay, time. Sure. Like, can we okay. add 10 more minutes? And then yeah, we're yeah. We're done? Okay, how about an extra quarter after 8? Um, well, or hopefully sooner than that. Yeah, yeah. Sooner at, than least, at least up until 8 o'clock. Okay, let's just go around whenever we're done. Okay, okay. so go ahead. Right. Um, I'd like to just say that I, I um, agree with you. I just think respect is really important and no bullying on either end. It is Dave's building. I just like to say, uh, just respect the mic. Mary, um, I would like to say, CJ, I don't think you're victimized, which you reported here today. Mm -hmm. I think you've had a conflict with someone, 
And I think the issue, too, is that Dave feels victimized by you not, I don't know for sure, but having not discussed and made an agreement with him that you were going to file the, youth, the restraining order. You know, I don't know if you did or didn't speak to him, but I understand you didn't. So that's, that's the boundary issue. I also have to say that I think there is some attitude of anger towards CJ, which may be righteously, but... <laughs> I did I said attitude of anger. Okay. Well, I think, I think let's let's say let's say attitude oh, of anger towards CJ, which I do think would have been healthier to talk about and resolve in some fashion. But the alternative of going to the government without Dave's permission, who is the landlord, is the real the big thing that's now it's come to a crisis for that reason. Chuck. Well, I am. Third CJ came up to this issue as, as he just said. Time after time after time. And they have not been addressed. If I had somebody threaten me or mess my car and I brought it up and I brought it up and I brought it up, I would in the end have to go to the authority. It's going to take some time. So it doesn't bother me at all that he went to the authority. I find that this is not truly, it's kind of, it's kind of a provincial group of uni unified belief as opposed to a group of diverse belief. The, the comment about uh, fighting the government uh, government, uh, corporate, whatever, uh, is uh, kind of symptomatic. So I, and I value having almost all views wherever I've worked. Been in and so in my view, we did not resolve the issue. We let it slide because we didn't want to take it up. And then CJ, I mean, if somebody's messing with your car and messing with you, that's all you can do, babe. And Dave Bicking is not the police. He has no standing in this at all. As far as what really happened, the only way to really find out what that is is take it to court. And then you'll find out, maybe find out what really happened, although. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, like, two things. Is um, the decision that like, he decided to make effect to everybody, and that's kind of how I feel like the government does wrong, is they don't take everybody's views and everybody's, like, how it affects everyone into consideration, just how it would affect them or how it would benefit them. And the other thing is, is like, um, at least me and like a lot of other people that I see, like, have been a part of this for so long. And if you don't feel comfortable coming to the group with these different kind of things, or like making yourself known, you know, and like maybe you could have just come to the group and saying, hey, like, if you don't take me seriously, I will file restraints. <coughs> like, just making okay. yourself, you know, open to the possibility of talking to everybody, and not just, you know. Like, I think the biggest months. part of like being with the group is you have to like you know be honest with everybody here, and you have to be able to like I mean I trust people here. Like if you're willing to get arrested with other people, you have to trust that they're not just going to run away. Like you have to trust what you know other people do and how they act. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're learning quick. <laughs> I'm going to uh, tend to agree with Eric's position because, to her, one, if this group has to learn how to resolve disputes within the group, it was kind of ignored partially because of lack of interest, and partially it's the stuff we did talk about a lot. And, and um, I just feel that he has to be removed from the group and cannot even ask to come back until after the restraining order is removed. Yeah. And you cannot put this address or this meeting on a restraining order, and all people have to disclose restraining orders to make it fair so we know what's going on. 
I agree with a lot of what's been said. Um, and I don't know anything about any violence. I'm just coming in from out of town, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but I really do think we need to take it seriously and we need to resolve differences in a way that we figured out is compatible with our values without having to go to the man for anything ever. Um, and we've never really done that or figured that out. We need to get a group doing it or what? It seems like part of the picture. Thanks, Polly. Um, the whole panda issue aside, on your blog, Occupyrate, the second to the last posting that you made is called, Is Occupy Minneapolis a Cult? The Available Evidence So Far. So the second that I read that, I was pretty sure that I never wanted you to be here or organize with you at all. And it says, I'm still a participant, isn't that funny? And he says, I've been part of other cults before, and like, don't worry you guys, you can all still get out. And that's, this is not what this is, and if you think that, that's fine, but don't come back. It's a cult. If you're gonna talk bad about us and gather evidence against us to write some weird article on your blog, like, don't come here anymore, at all. We did that while she was here. Yeah. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say other than I know people have been super uncomfortable around uh, CJ for a long time. I have a really hard time trusting him because he goes by about 80 different names. So I don't really know who he is or, and that makes it really hard to trust somebody. And um, yeah, please don't come back. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the salient points have been made. Um, you know, there's been info drops about his history and other groups. Um, you know, I'm pretty tolerant as well. Um, but, you know, ever since this UAPB uh, incident uh, regarding CJ, you know, like, I trust Michelle. Uh, and, and again, when it comes to being arrested, when it comes to being with people that you're gonna share putting your life on the line, like if Michelle says it, I'm cool with that. Yeah. And, and ever since Occupy started, I've been like, okay, like other people wanna let them, let them hang out, but, um, you know, and I'd also like to, to remind people that, um, you know, there's this old anarchist thing that Maybe sometime, maybe sometime, you, you involve the state if there's no other option. But as an old friend of mine from back in CJ's early days uh, would say, uh, the only time you ever involve the authorities is if there's no possible way they could make it worse. <laughs> and in this situation, here, here. that clearly was not the case. This is so much worse. And the date? is a month ago, which means you, you, didn't, you, you didn't let there be a serious discussion. You, you brought it up once or whatever, and people didn't, no, 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 but, but this is, the, the, but the, 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 the date on the, the order, it's over a month ago. So, so, okay. One voice, please. Okay, so you file. Okay, so what? Basically, what you're admitting is you went out the next day. Whatever. Point. Point being, like, you didn't give time for there to be a community response to this. I have personally talked to Dave and Jan, and with others in the room. You know, there was something being worked upon, and and you, you violated that, and you went behind everybody's back. All right, um, let's go to the back of the room and then back to Sam. Uh, every time I think about whether or not to come to one of these meetings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, no, I honestly, I honestly wonder how much time do we have to dedicate to this man. I have almost no interest, I mean, no interest, to be honest, with talking about this man. Uh, I hope that we can stop talking about him as soon as possible. I don't even care what's going on now. I just want to stop talking about this man. That's all. Yeah. I can say, like, watching your behavior patterns, I watch people who exhibit the exact same behavior patterns occupying Indianapolis completely eradicated and make it no more. 
So it's logically to me, I'm going to have to say, and these people we, we found out had worked for the NSA, there was proof. I'm not saying you're a cop. I'm not because I don't have any proof, but these other people we found out were working with federal agencies, and the only thing I'm going to say, man, is if you're not getting a paycheck from some agency, you're still working for them by being some person. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only thing I'm going to say is, Panda's my brother, much like everyone else in this room, besides you, I don't consider you a brother any longer, because you haven't violated that trust. And there's a certain amount of trust that you need to build within people, and you've done everything you possibly could to violate that at every step and turn along the way ever since I met you. And for that reason, I would just like to say, let's do a temperature check. Does anyone disagree with Dave that we should not allow you here any longer? Let's hold on and then until everybody's yeah. done talking. Okay. That's all I want to say. Sorry. I'll pass on the comment. Okay. Um, I'm giving my spot to Ziggy. Oh. <laughs> Go for it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> CJ, pardon several times that your behavior at these meetings, you've been told nonchalantly, you've been told blatantly, time and time again, that your disruptive, cruel, unfathomable behavior in the face of solidarity is not conducting any sort of like activism now let's go over some of the things you've done you have stolen a car from an activist you have ditched people in another state you have broken up a socialist couple you have called me an inebriate several times while you continue to drive around in a van filled with booze you have several times walked up and utterly called it people out for sticking up against you. It's time, man. It's time. Now, unless you're going to change your ways, I see no reason that you should be allowed in this building. Thank you, Ziggy. Yay, Ziggy! I'm good. Okay. I think that was... Um, although I don't know him very well, I think that what he has done is wrong because, again, like, people trust here to each other and he has broken that and as far as I have learned from like this whole uh, speeches I don't think um, he's a very um, he's not the person to trust basically Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, Serendipity? See you, Ken. It's not been very nice going It's all. Benji? Um, I don't know half of you all, but you all probably don't know me that well. I'm Angel's son, and um, from the age, I think, of like nine or ten before even Occupy was happened, I was taught not to trust Chuck. I thought his name was Chuck. It was. It that was. One of his names? It was. It was one of his names. I, I don't, because of some previous group things, I don't know. I was just never told to talk to him, so I never had. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Good move. Okay. Beth. 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 Well, since I can't really hear anything or see anything, um, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm sure at some point when I get my stuff back, I will. Okay. Thanks for um, pass. One clarification. Yes. What is your name? Legally, like Sujay Sparrow, or Captain Jack Sparrow, and so Which is it? Captain Jack Sparrow. So that is your legal name, but here you go by CJ. Yeah. So then the court records will not be as we know it, but as you are, which we don't know you as. I can clarify. I want to see a person. Yeah, I can, I can clarify from going down to the Hennepin County legal records that there is a legal name change entry between Charles David Vibon into Captain Jack Sparrow several months ago, and there is a very large uh, record of both, uh, you know, going after people on harassment charges. Some of those were upheld, some of those were dismissed. He also had two warrants put out on him for welching on the yellow pages for $3,400 and many other arcane side stories. So, but, and so I have a, the, if anyone wants to get into like the long legal filings, there are 
plenty to go around, and they're kind of expensive to print off. And I asked for the one about when he sued uh, the homeless shelter in the Star Tribune, and they're pulling that one for me. So I'm going to take a look at that later, too. The next Friday or the Friday after. Um, uh, okay, yeah. I just want to say my piece. Um, I and Dan have given you a chance, like, all this time since you've been coming in here. We have played fair with everyone here. Um, but then in your blogs, you state bad things about us, but you don't really know us. You like to think you do, but you don't. Especially with that comment with that Asian facilitator in one of your blogs. Okay? Um, that's racist to me? Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't appreciate it. Um, yes, you wrote some nice things about that, but that to me is kind of creepy because it was kind of like a love letter. Um, also, you know, the points you bring up here are just self-involved. That's basically all it is. It's about you. And that's why we don't want you here. Because this is not about individual like people. It's about us. It's about Occupy, what we were, what, we, what we've done. We are a family here. But you take it upon yourself to be induced you know, with your own private, oh, this is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. Every time you bring these up, it's things that happen to you. Not things that we discuss about, but things that happen to you and how we can discuss it to help you. That's selfish. That's greed right there. And we don't need that in here. We all play the same part in this world just like everybody else. And I'm sorry, but as Gillette says, don't let the door hit you behind your ass, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, okay, let's go. Uh, Beth, Mike. CJ, let's, and then and then Chuck, let, let's keep it real brief. Oh, real brief. Okay, real brief, folks. Then we got to move it through. Okay, so yeah, Mike and. Uh, Can we just get past all the bullshit and just take a temperature check as to whether we want to chicken shit ass at the door or not? Okay, we'll, we'll get to the temperature checks. So let's just clear out the stack and then we'll we'll get to the point which Dave has asked in his email. I believe that's the logical thing to do. So Beth is next. Hi. Uh, I was trying to say, like what you said, that's in my frustration with my situation is that people gotta be real, and if people are shit talking to people or not saying the truth, that's not okay because it's a very lonely place, as I said with Lynn Stewart, when you're the only one that knows the truth, and the system or the people are against you, and that's not gonna work. That's capitalism at first. Okay, uh, all right. It's a budget, yeah. Eric, then Ian, and then I think CJ had the terrifying question. Yeah, I think it's important as people kind of dial on the bandwagon here to think about uh, who we are as a group and like what our boundary is. Uh, because, you know, there have been other people that have been unpopular at times within the space. So it's important that this is not about personality, it's not because of the way someone looks or, you know, uh, they didn't show up one day, you know, whatever, whatever your criteria. This is about someone who has deliberately and behind our back decided to involve the state, and I think most people feel unnecessarily, with this space. Um, this is not the same as calling the fire department when the building's on fire, okay? This is, this is about someone that had an option, a choice. And also, I would just add, like, the communication, and I, and I have no idea whether or not Captain Jack is sincere when he says he's been trying to raise this in every meeting. I personally have not seen this issue raised uh, in, in these, you know, Violence at our meetings does not correlate to me with filing a restraining order on Canada. Like, I did not make that connection. I know there are some people who apparently did make the connection there, but like, this is the first time I've heard that Panda was basically barred from the space. And that's something that we should all have known about. Memorandum. But let's keep the state and the corporations out of Okay, so, uh, E and then CJ, let's do a brief, folks. What, uh, okay, 
are you on stack? I'm sorry, Chuck. Chuck is on stack. Let's okay, but again, let's, let's try to keep them down to like like 30 seconds max, folks. Let's go. E and then and then Chuck, I think, did have his hand up before CJ. Okay. Okay. But E first, real quick, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so I admire Panda. Um, I get a kick out of Panda. Um, and I also um, don't know what time will bring, but I he's somebody that I really, really like. And um, I've definitely done actions with him, so I'll speed this up. Um, Panda in the past, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what I'm saying, because I think that he is an open guy and would be like, whatever. So he'd be like, whatever, man. So in the past. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe not. Well, I don't whatever. think you should talk about Panda. Yeah. He's not, Panda, here. He's Panda, not here. Okay, can we just, I, just, I, I have to point out, Panda, due to the ruling on that piece of paper, Panda is legally forbidden from being in this meeting, so he cannot defend himself. Yeah. It, it's a Hennepin. The uh, sheriff's department and the city police are both ordered to prevent him from having a participation in this discussion. So let's try to factor Keep that in as we yeah. close this out. That, 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 that's very important. Mm -hmm. Sort of the, right. the important thing. So, um, any, with that being said, just, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to say that he has been aggressive to me. I care about him, and I, I, I am only saying that because it's, that's the reality. So he's not like that all the time, but he has his times. And you know, um, also I had in the early part of Occupy, I had someone who's in Occupy who I still care about and still think is a great occupier. I was hurt by them, like they punched me. So this is this is um, this was early on, and this is something that is ongoing. Um, I don't mean it happens all the time, but I do want to. I do know that there are boundary issues. That's all I want to say. I don't want to say. I want to say I'm still friends with these two people. So. Okay. Um, so. Thank you. Okay. So let's go. Uh, Chuck Klein, CJ, and then Mary Lynch at council. So. You're up, buddy. Thank you. Well, I know because there's a very important person to the occupied no longer these meetings, and that's very really important. All right, and I wish she was here to speak, but she has to afraid of theology like I don't feel safe or I don't feel comfortable at this meeting. And I've met with her recently done a lot of funny issues. And I miss her good sense and moreover her capacity to get things done as opposed to part of us. So I wish she was here, but I also know why she was not here. And it's because of the issue of uh, comfortableness and safety. Okay. Uh, you can Mary, I'll make this point to Rachel. Mary Lynch, go first, not the last one. Okay, Mary Lynch, yeah. Sure. Uh, I just, it's curious to me that uh, a court date hasn't been requested. Because I would think that one would want to put it all out on the table from both sides and then let the judge decide. Alright, so the court date has not been uh, set because uh, Panda has not, has not been served yet, so he's not been coming to the No, 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 Yeah. All right. I don't think we should bother. Yeah. Dave Vicking said, 
I think we should I just... I think we should just respect okay. Dave Bicking. He's right. dating us right now. I think we should... Okay. Um, all right. Well, but, okay. He is can be fast, and then Jerry. And did anybody else want to get... And then I honestly... Personally, I think that a temperature check as to whether or not CJ is permanently asked to leave, if that is indicated by a very large section of people, that will be a clear and logical signal as to the situation. People can affirm that CJ should be asked to leave permanently, neutral, or opposed. And then we can, we can, we can lay that out and as, a, as a statement of the intent of the body, because this situation rises to a higher level than simply this set of meetings. And the signal, we need to generate a clear signal as to what the body of people here has an opinion for. By consensus. With that said, um, one voice. Okay. So I believe we have Jerry, E, Eric. No, I don't okay. want to. Okay. I don't think that um, the owner of this building needs to make a decision and that he would only make a decision if we fail to make a do the right thing, which is kind of like, you know, so you go there. But let's vote on it. Let's vote okay. on it. All right, so from, next, next. from this building. What? No, from, from this group. building? Or just from from this body of meetings. We do not have control over who is allowed into the building in general, although CJ set up a situation where Panda is not allowed in the building. Yeah, yeah. So, I Okay, I'm sorry. Eric, and then uh, er, other, uh, other, Eric, Christopher Hefty. He, he sorry. Angel. Okay, so Angel, E, Eric, Gillette. Uh, I just clarifying, uh, we're going to vote, and I just want to make sure that we're talking about beyond any meetings in this space. It's, it's, yeah, that it's not just 4,200 Cedar Ave, but it's all occupied Minneapolis meetings. I, I, I mean, I don't know if we can permanently bar someone from meetings like that. Um, yeah, I guess we can. Yes. Yeah, we can if, tell him to go away. He solves this problem with Panda, and he makes a gesture of goodwill. And he wants to come back and actually do some things with us. I think that should be cool. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Define this permanently is because okay. you know, things could change. He could repent and come back. Okay, so let's let Ego, and then we have a direct response from, from Loki, and then we'll E, and then Loki. Okay, let's move this along, folks. Um, so I just want to, I heard what Eric just said, Eric, and I want to say I like what he just said. I hope that something like that could happen. I don't know. Now, what I wanted to say is, would there be a, could there be a possibility, a possibility, like possibilities, that if CJ resolves, if there's mediation, if CJ resolves a dispute at the panda, um, would he then be permitted to re, re um, participate in that? Okay. All right. So let's see. We had. Sorry, I'm losing track here. Um, I know Doug, Doug is on. Uh, um, let's off. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Let's go. Doug, then Mike Kaplan. And, I'm sorry. Loki, I feel like we Loki, should. And then Doug, and then Mike Kaplan. We keep adding people, dude. Yeah. We, okay. So, look, if everyone stop. can just take their 15 seconds, and we will okay. close stag and have a temperature check as to this. Yeah. Can we do that, please? So, Doug. I, I just to like to again reiterate, a lot of people have kicked him out. I don't know what his game is. Um, but there's so many people in the Twin Cities community that have asked me and others in this room, why the hell are you allowing him in in the first place? And I said in my initial speech, I like to be tolerant. I, you know, it's part of the Occupy model that we include everybody. But he's crossed a lot of lines and most of this room agrees. I'm not saying there may not be an issue with Panda that needs to be resolved. But that is totally separate from the lines that were crossed here. Okay, Loki. Here specifically. Eric, please um, don't jump stack. Thank you. Loki. I'm sorry, but when there is racist comment said on a post on Facebook about a certain person, which was me, um, I wouldn't want that person to be around, especially with most people around here that had mistrust. Um, and a 
of course, other uh, groups have kicked him out as well. I mean, why would you feel safe? Why? Uh, okay, <laughs> Gillette, it's like 10, 15 seconds. You guys, we need to really, we close Okay, Gillette, all right. Does anybody else, last no call. Stack. No stacks. No stacks. No stacks. No. All right. Wow. Ziggy does get a grand finale, whatever, whatever. Like, but look, Gillette, real quick, and then Bob, CJ, and then stack is closed. Not, there is no try. Has anybody been threatened or attacked by CJ? Is my first question. Yes. yes. You stole someone's guard. Yes. Okay. That's one. About the pornography. Yeah, we don't even want to get into the porn uh, thing. Somebody on did that. I'll tell you that on the uh, issue of bringing in the state and so forth and state involvement, I could play Minnesota for all legal action against him. No? Um. I just want to point that out. Okay. And uh, the, third thing I just to, the, third, the third question I want to pose is, uh, if there is a discussion about reoccupying people's closet. Does anybody think that, that Occupy has a right to ban CJ from people's closet? Just want to put that out. Okay. 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 That's it. okay, CJ, if you can be brief, then this, we can move ahead with this process. One Thank you. Brought this seven times in this body. Talk about the issue of violence in the group. That's what I want to talk about. I brought up all these issues. But you filed the restraining order? One voice, please. One voice, please. One voice. We refuse to talk about it. We refuse to talk about it. We refuse to talk about it seven times. Okay? Now, you're an anarchist. You make decisions by consensus. We don't have time to make a decision. You think people ought to ban people for life with the goddamn twinkle? What the fuck? WTF? What's going on here? We're anarchists. Anarchists. Okay. Okay. Speak okay. for yourself. Alright, folks. So, but everyone speak for themselves and not call a whole group of whole group okay. anarchists. Alright, guys. Listen. One more. Be all of all of this. Thank you. Be that as it may, everyone. Can we please express the idea clearly whether or not, as individuals, we accountably say that CJ should permanently be asked to leave from all Occupy Minneapolis gatherings, including Wednesday night meetings and other and other affiliated Occupy Minneapolis events, clearly mark that as this if you agree, this if you are stand aside, and this if you are opposed. Now, I want everybody to do that very clearly, and then we will pan the friggin' live stream camera around. That is not a valid option, I'm sorry. Like, because we're clearly- If we're gonna make a decision, then we have to be able to be blocked. Okay, don't no. jump stack, buddy. Look, no. the thing is, <laughs> yeah. we're, no, we're going we're to take a that. check on this and to see where people's positions that. are. Who changed that? Please if you want to abstain, you can leave. Stack, Eric. Thank you. This is not a now, GDA. everyone, well, this we're is not a decision. general assembly. We're right. making a decision here. Eric, if I discuss with you, could we add a few stars again? Where's the good play? And now, all right. So, everyone, please. If we can please make a clear indication and hold it for 10 seconds, if you support CJ being permanently removed, please do this. And if you can please operate the camera to show everyone this yes, this stand aside, this no. Please show what is this. this. Some sort of secret fucking right. society? What is this? What is this? What rubric are you using okay. for this? This is All right. transparency. Okay. 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 Okay.
He just so we have set up at least one down. I'm also twinkling, though you cannot see my hands. Wait, it's time to block. You're I'm blocking. I already made that clear. I'm blocking. Then do it. This is, a, this is clearly a decision. I'm bad. Eric's time now. Eric's time now. What do you have to do with it? Eric's time now. What do you have to do with it? All right. So we have at least 18 hands up. Now I would like to count the number two in the room. What's that? You counted 22. You counted 22. Okay, we have between 18 and 22. I'm going to count everyone in the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What process? Eric, use it. One last morning. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. All right. We have between 18 and 22 out of 31. Have affirmed that this is uh, agreed to that. I want a board Eric! I want a board out! I want a board out! Out! Don't Just say one word! I want a board out! We're not going to call the cops! Why are you asking about that? Tommy, we can make decisions as a group. Let's relax. We can make autonomous decisions. Let's relax. We can make autonomous decisions as a group. Okay, Grandmaster Dan! Motherfucker! Majority decision has been taken by the group of people here. So, this is probably an opportunity to point out that Eric also lost his temper two weeks ago. Alright, folks. That completes that process. Let's take about five or ten minutes and then we'll go in to watch the Red movie. That is done, and I think we'll also see how Eric. Hey, give a hold of seat. I'm not just streaming this. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Yeah, that's not the first time. Okay, because I have never seen that. That is not the first time he's done that. Hopefully that is the last time he'll be allowed here. Because that is not the first time he's thrown up at anyone. At Hockey Pop-Up or whatever Pop-Up Occupies he's been doing. He blew up at me twice. And then an Occupy would be he blew up at me again. So I do not trust him. I do not trust him. I believe he should not be a part of the Say what? Oh, yeah. Hey, this lady wants to talk to you, though. Ziggy, man, some peace, though. Six there. Ziggy said he was going to be
voice on the internet. It was Yeah. Okay. Are we leaving? Yeah. Right, just a second. 
Don't tell. 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 Don't this is the second time <laughs> by the way, just to be louder, louder. He push and push and push until Panda actually did something. This is what this piece of shit does. You need to leave right now. Dave said you need to leave and you need to leave. Yes, Dave has clearly stated he is not welcome here and he needs to leave. Yes, we do have it in here. Then sure. They just read it. Shit's getting crazy. I wrote it. That's why I'm going to write it. Where is the thing in has the email from the day. Nope. I did not see it. He's a giant, though. He's a giant. He's still here. That's his computer. Here he is, here he is, right here. I came back to this. Now they want to see it in writing that Dave doesn't want him. What about? See, there's one thing at a time. The pastor. Alright, so we're still running the recording. Um, and Bob. Bob. Yeah. Here's the whole, here's the whole email. Okay. Take a look. Yeah. Maybe I'll angle it to get at my dinner. No, Dan has the email. He just pulled it up, and they're verifying it now, so he should be leaving yeah. soon. <laughs> I mean, look at it from yeah, Dave's they, perspective. They, like, he's been drawn into a legal thing on surprise. Yeah, they can call Dave. Uh, yeah. I'm cool. <laughs> Good. I don't want Hi, Ziggy. I am talking to you now. Oh, boys. <laughs> I'm Jamie's friend, Emily. Hello. I don't know. I don't want to mess up their chords. Dan, who had permission to open this space back. tonight? Look, this is Emily. <laughs> open this space tonight. Wait, where's me? I think so. Okay. Look, our faces are in there. Yeah, we can't close. <laughs> well, I don't know how to work. Okay, we're turning it back. Dan, I have to say that I think it is somewhat ambiguous. Here's the problem. I'll show you what I'm reading here. Excuse me, everyone. Dave is on the phone and good. he's on live stream right now. Okay. Oh, good. Yes, Dave? Dave's on the phone. They're in a rest area in Ohio watching on live stream. Nice. <laughs> Dave and Jan have been watching on live stream in Ohio. Yes. No, he refuses to leave because he says that you haven't you haven't said that he has to go. So can I put you on speakerphone and you can tell him to go? I'll talk. No. Speaker. Okay. Dave's on speaker. All right, Dave.
Dave said he has to leave and he can't come back until further notice. He said he's not going to resist, but he has to be dragged out of here. to be closed tonight. Are you planning to leave the building along with the rest of us? You are? When will that occur? The rest of us are gone, I'm still not coming back. Okay. Like, do you want to do it now? Not now. Like, within five minutes? Yeah, let's just watch and see how people clear out. We're cleaning, bro. You need to leave. Everyone needs to Well, we're finding our way to the good function. Talk to your family. You're, you're just pushing everybody away. It's not a good place to be psychologically. Go get close to somebody. Have some fun. Don't be angry. No, I mean, wait, 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 that's the URL. You can find many things that are sort of resembling truth at that URL. So tell me, I mean, honestly, I'm not that ideological person, but I think there are, you know, dichotomies, right? And so one way I've looked at it is like, uh, a word that I think I invented is a lull vertarian. I'm in it for the lulls, you know what I mean? I always try to hope that Worrying about process and internal organization. Don't don't become you know serious, overly serious things. Like you want to get things done. You know what I mean? And I honestly think, dude, like by the tone and the content and the weird stuff that you've written about people that we didn't even quote tonight, that you're a grumpy terrian. You're not a lulvertarian. You're you have a grumpy mindset, dude. You write weird, sick stuff about people at three in the morning. 
love letters and stuff. Yeah. Like, that's, that's weird. Happy. That's happy stuff. You know? No, it's Here's weird. Here's the thing. You get one, I'll get you one. I'll get you one letter. You know, I, don't, I don't dislike you. I don't dislike you. You know, I, I wish we would not be having this, this kind of violence, you know, but I'll send you a love letter. Okay, <laughs> but the point is, those were weird. Okay. okay. Well, I'm, you know, there's just something well, That was a little weird. Are people not weird in here? I mean, he's not weird? Come on, give me a break. He's not weird? What? This guy? He's weird, but he's got a sense of humor. He's got a sense of humor that doesn't involve belittling people. Your sense of humor involves belittling people like every time. I can't do it then call the cops. See, that's what you said. As soon as someone said, like, there should be a restraining order on you, you said you'd have to call the police. I would never leave, no matter how many people ask me to leave, because you don't give any respect or deference. You don't You don't give mutual respect to other people. We don't, we, don't, we don't ban people for life with, with, with a you know? Where does that come from? Do you, do you honestly think that that many people taking that decision was predicated on, on merely the restraining order? Or do you think that it was an accumulation of a huge series yeah. of postal acts, exactly. including exactly. stealing someone's car, exactly. ripping them off exactly. for thousands of dollars? Do you have documentation like, that? Do get it. So what's the people okay. to be involved right. in your activities? A very large number of people, people find voting tonight have not been at most of these meetings from these events for somebody who likes to see things get done, you sure are supporting a total waste of time. I'm happy to stand on time. camera and hey, talk about the rumors. Room? No, I don't give a I appreciated shit. him coming here be. because he Decision told the truth about some of the misconceptions I, which you happy. guys, no, right. I have to see, okay. which you guys ah. repeated. We I think that's the part week. where the lights get turned off. Right. 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 The space is closed. This meeting space is super closed. All right, I gotta put away this uh, some of this gear. I know, I know. Leave it for Christ's sakes. All right. All right. Come on, we gotta go. Look, other groups. This group is done. You'll just be your own little group doing your own little things, but you won't be part of a movement. That's fine. Chuck, no one's been kicked out, dude, except for this. Like. We'll talk about it later. We all need to just leave the building right now. Calling someone a loser is belittling them. That is not nice. Just disprove. Where where are they on the on, on the, the city plaza? They wanted to be there. Nobody's That's there. That's irrelevant. Well, no, but they talk and talk about it. Nothing happens. We have to respect David Vickings wishes for us to leave because this is not our property. And I was asked to do that, so everyone please leave. Out. Yeah, right. Everyone out the door. I'm gone. It doesn't matter. Okay. 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 Right now. Let's go, bro. No, you don't. No, 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 no. I just want to talk to you. Can I, can I call? Oh, 
No, you cannot. Dave, please tell him to leave. David? David? Yes. Yes. David? David, can I have your word that you will not allow the meeting to proceed tonight if I leave? That they won't come in behind me and have the meeting without behind my back? There is nothing. There's nothing left. It's 10 to 9, bro. I, want, I, want, I, trust, I trust David. Can Dave, I, can you please tell him to leave? David? Uh, David? It's irrelevant. More fake decision yeah. points, synthetic decision spam, blah, blah, blah. Can you hear him? Yes. 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 Yes, I can hear you, David. The meeting is over. The building is closed. Okay, and you will not allow people back in here. You, you will... trying to involve the police in an issue. I'm not, I'm not, I want, I want, want to involve the police in this issue for sure. Okay. Just say no one is allowed in the building okay, after okay, he okay, leaves. Okay. That's, yeah, if you, if you give me a real word, nobody will be allowed in the building after I leave uh, t uh, uh, tonight. For uh, this meeting. For this meeting. I, and I'm okay, I'll leave. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you on this, David. I'll trust you. I will trust you. Just give me your word that you will not allow other people, allow other people in the building after I leave. <sighs> Tonight. Tonight. No! Leave! No one is allowed in the building after CJ leaves. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. CJ, okay. please leave. Okay. Yeah. All right. CJ. Me, me, I can't hear him. Oh my God. Just said it, CJ! Jesus. The meeting is over. Okay, so you need to leave. You need to leave. You're not allowed to come back in here after I leave. Is that right, David, tonight? David, David, I can't hear you. It's not right. part of it that you David, get to. Shh, shh, no, it's not. You do not get to. Uh, David? If everyone else is leaving and he's still here. So let's all walk out. Come on, let's bro. Let's all walk out. Come on. Let's go, bro. Come on, buddy. This is what you call trolling IRL. I'm taking my dinner out to the patio. All right, buddy. Do you, you want me to like We're walk in front of you outside. or what? Like, come on. Everyone's up. Dan, can I, go can outside. Can people come, will not come back. Dan, go outside. He said so, dude. Come on. Let's go. Can I have your work too? I'm not coming back in the building. Come on. Just give me your work. I have my Daniel. word. I'm not coming in the building. Go outside. Right. Come on, buddy. Everyone outside. Right. You too. So the pirate thing. Yeah, we'll get to that later. No, I, I, you still need Everyone to. Everyone outside. Outside, outside. Thank you. All right. I can't hear you. CJ, you need to leave. Go outside. Okay. You need to go outside now. We're all out, dude. We're all out. You need to leave. I need a lot of help. I need a lot of help. CJ, I'm still standing in here. Everyone else is out of the building, buddy. He's on the phone right now. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hold on. All right. So I got, uh, I got Dave Becking's word that the meeting will not continue after I leave. I'm not sure if they'll follow through on that. But uh, I hope they follow through on that. I trust Dave Becking and... Uh, the video. Here we have it. Show all roles in real life. An epic fail has wrapped its axle for the last time. Hey, what's up, Theo? Cheers. Cheers. Good to see you. So, everybody's least favorite person is now done. All right, dude. So, can someone, do you want to hold this for one second? Thank you. You can have a bite if you like. Okay. So, folks, I think we will, um, oh, that's the internet. Okay. Well, 
Um, I still have the recording on the computer, and I will upload the full thing. Um, I don't know why it lost interrupts. Um, but uh, yeah, that is game over. Uh, spamification is complete. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, have a good night.